Hey everyone, this is Matt Perez, and in this video, I want to talk about the Revolve feature. Now, the Revolve, just like all the other features, has a Revolve Cut feature that goes along with it. So we're going to be talking about both of these, but there's really no difference between Revolve and Revolve Cut. If your sketch is valid for Revolve and it intersects another solid body, you can use it to cut away. So let's get started talking about Revolve. And the first thing I want to do is I want to talk about sketching. Now the reason I want to talk about sketching is anytime you make a revolved part, you are dealing with a difference between a radius or a diameter value. And there's a cool way that you can handle this inside SOLIDWORKS. When we create a line, you can create either a construction line or a center line. We're going to go from our origin, and we're going to go out to the right 100 millimeters. So now that we have this construction line, I'm going to start drawing uh, a few more lines in here, and I'm just going to make a revolved profile. And come back. So now we can start doing things like adding relations, such as a coincident relation to make sure that this line would come down and intersect that, and we can start giving dimensions. Now the reason I like to use a center line or a construction line when I'm dealing with revolved parts is when you come down to dimension this, you can get the distance from that line to this part, but if you drag down below it, you now get a diameter value. So you do not get this if you have a solid line for your revolve axis. Only if you use that center line or construction geometry line, you can then start doing things like dimensioning the diameter. Another cool feature here with the construction line or center line, if you're applying dimensions to it, the next dimension you apply, if it can be applied to this line, will stay active. So you can see it's a quick way for me to start adding a bunch of dimensions to this area very quickly. So you see I just come back, grab the next line segment, and now I've quickly added diameter values for all those different sections. And then of course you can come back, do things like apply angle dimensions and a few more distance dimensions and so on. I'm not really too worried about fully defining this, but hopefully you can see that in your sketch, using this construction line or a center line for your revolve axis can make things a little bit easier to sketch. So once we hop out of here, we're going to go into the revolve boss base feature. With the sketch selected and the fact that I automatically used a center line, it's going to try to revolve it for you. If this doesn't happen automatically, you can go ahead and manually select the sketch and manually select the revolve axis. Now once you select the revolve axis, which really could be any straight line, for instance, we could revolve about this if we wanted to, get a very different result, revolve about this, and get a solid cylinder with some cutaways on it, even come to the straight line on the end and see that we have very different results for everything. So in this case, we're gonna use the center line. This is the intended use for this. And we're gonna take a look at our options. First, we have direction one. So inside here, blind, up to vertex, up to surface, offset from surface, and midplane. These are really applicable if your revolve intersects something. They make more sense when you start to use things like a revolve cut, but you do have those options directly in here. They work just like they do in any other feature. You simply need to select a vertex, surface, offset from surface, or use the midplane option to go a certain direction in each, uh, in this case, revolve axis. So you see if we use the midplane, the direction to option disappears just like it did when we did an extrude. But if we go to blind, we can add a direction to and say that we want to go maybe 120 degrees in direction two. You see that it can go around a different amount. In most cases, when you create a revolve, you're going to do 360 degree revolution about an axis that you define in your original sketch. It can be an axis that you create based on intersections of other geometry or edges in other sketches or other features. As we go down, we do have the option to do a thin feature. In this case, if we select a thin wall like 0.5, we're going to be creating a enclosed shelled body of this. We can choose the direction, we can do mid plane, or we can do two direction and select which direction to go in either side. Most people aren't going to use a thin feature revolve with a closed profile sketch. That typically happens when you have an open profile sketch. And I'll show you that in just a second. So once we make the revolve feature, you can see that it's here and 
It's a solid body. All the standard features can now be applied to it, fillets, chamfers, uh, whatever you need to do, you can do inside of this feature. So now if we hide this solid body, let's go back on our front plane and let's create a new sketch. Again, we're gonna use the center line, come out. The distance doesn't really matter because it's just a construction line. I'm gonna turn off for construction and I'm gonna come back in here and I'm just gonna make an underdefined sketch and exit out of here. Now, even though we're in a solid feature, a revolve boss base, not a surface feature, I'm gonna go in here and it tells me that it's currently open. Now, SOLIDWORKS tries to do two things. If you say yes, it's gonna automatically try to close it. And if I move this dialog box out of the way, it's gonna take a straight line from this point to this point. If we say yes, you can see that it takes a straight point through it and it tries to create a solid revolve feature for you. Now, it doesn't create anything directly in this sketch, but most people, when they see dialogs pop up, by default, they're gonna hit yes, even if they don't understand what it says. And notice that we were essentially closing that profile off. Now, even if it intersects or it cuts through geometry, for instance, if I turn Instant 3D on, if it cuts through something like this, well, that's gonna produce a problem for us and uh, it, will, it will essentially fail when it tries to do the revolve. But let's select the sketch again. Let's try to do a revolve and let's tell it no, we don't wanna close it. By default, it's gonna select thin feature for you and it's gonna to try to make a thin wall revolve of whatever your sketch is. So as you're sketching these things, if you know that it's gonna be a consistent thin wall feature and you're probably gonna go back and shell it after the fact, you can create a single line for your revolve and, uh, and simply approach it by using that thin revolve feature. Now, it's also the same if you wanna do this inside of a surface. So let's go ahead and let's just show this sketch, go to our surfaces tab and do a revolve surface. Select the sketch, it's gonna automatically revolve about that construction axis. And notice that we have the same options in here, except for we don't have the thin revolve option. It's automatically just gonna do a surface. We can have direction one, direction two, and notice that we have some feature scope options here, but really what we're doing is we're just creating a surface. And then inside of here, we'd have to go back and thicken that surface to get the same result. So ultimately that gives us the same result as doing a solid revolve, the revolve boss base with the thin wall feature. If we did it as a surface, we'd have to revolve it and then thicken it but again, you get the same result. So it really depends on what you wanna do with it after the fact. If you wanna do it as a surface and manipulate it with some surface tools, or if you wanna just create a thin wall solid right off the bat. So for the most part, that covers the Revolve feature. There is, again, an endless number of possibilities. You don't have to use straight lines. Uh, you only need a straight line in there for your Revolve axis, but then you can use splines, arcs, curves, fillets, whatever you need to to create your nice, well-blended Revolve features. In large, when people start playing with Revolve, they like to make things like water bottles or vases or things of that nature. And those are great for you to play around with the tool, figure out what it is. But just remember that the limitations to these features are really in how you view them. There are endless possibilities when it comes to using these features. So make sure you explore all the options. Well, that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this video and would love to hear from you. Let me know your thoughts or suggestions for other videos in the comment box below. Subscribe to my YouTube channel and visit LearnSolidWorks.com for more SolidWorks tips, tricks, and tutorials.